you what, they were, they were pretty down at one point. And I, I just thought I had an epiphany and said, you know, something in me said, buy stock in Apple. Okay? And I didn't. Okay? Um, Apple didn't have a very big market share of all the uh, personal computers, very small. It was considered a niche market, and um, you know, PCs dominated much more heavily than they do now. However, there was a strategy that Apple used to kind of change that scenario. It was a very smart thing to do. It happens all the time. It's very smart. Do you guys know what Apple did? Do you guys remember the first iMac computers? What did they look like? Huh? What were the first iMacs? Do you guys remember? They were in diff various colors. Grape, tangerine, strawberry, and what else? Like lime. Lime was green. Strawberry was red. Grape was purple. Tangerine was orange. So they designed these um, computers, these iMacs, with all these bright colors. Does anybody know why they did that? Who? Why? It's a marketing strategy. Yes, but, but why do that? Who were, you, who were you trying to sell these computers to? Uh, the idea was this. If you're a male, you are more likely to purchase a computer that is either what color? Black or gray? Probably black. If you are not a male, meaning what? female, a girl, maybe even a little boy. You may like the strawberry. See what I'm saying? So what they did, the strategy was this. Let's sell computers that appeal to women and children. Where do you find women and children? <laughs> the malls? <laughs> yeah, no child care. All these women are taking their kids, right? No. Elementary schools, is that right? Do you guys know in elementary schools, there's a lot of kids there. <laughs> and there's a lot of what? Women. There's a lot of women. There's not very many men. Is that true? Who works in elementary school? Do you see any male teachers? There's some, but is there much more? Mm -hmm. So the likelihood of um, a teacher being female in elementary school is much higher than that of a who? Male. So if they design computers that appeal to women and children, then they were, you know, these women are making decisions about which computers to buy. They're more likely to buy the Apple iMac. Okay? You guys, you guys okay with that idea? So you know, they have to test this stuff. What they do is, hey, hey, they get groups of people and say, would you buy this? And, you know, and they take the information, the women and men, and see how people feel. A strategy that's it's always used. Um, back in the 80s, I remember reading about when there was this, um, the Japanese really started selling a lot of cars, um, maybe even before, but I remember the strategy in the 80s with the Honda Prelude. Back then, I read about this. Um, the Japanese automakers designed the Prelude to appeal to who? To women. Okay? So they designed a car and they tested this. Hey, would you buy this asking men and women? A lot of the men would go, no, no, wouldn't buy it. A lot of the women were, oh, yes. Well, why do you think they did that? There's a reason they did it. It's not that I agree with what they did. It's their strategy, OK? They designed this car to appeal to women because, well, number one, women would buy it, <laughs> OK? But why would they focus on just women? What are the men busy doing then? Well, no. They thought of the strategy this way. This was their strategy. They thought, you know what? If you're a guy, you're going to want to get some girl in your what? Car. Right? So if she likes the prelude, isn't she more likely to you know, jump in your car, get it right home, right? Because you're in that prelude. So here a lot of these guys are going out and buying preludes because it appealed really to who? 
women. And that was their plan. It's not my plan. I didn't make, you know, this was their plan. This is a strategy they used for that particular car. Um, so my point is, you know, data is collected and gathered comparing different groups, men, women. It doesn't have to be men, women. It could be boys versus men. Who is more likely to listen to a radio show, you know, uh, boys between the age of what, 18 and 50 versus men over 50? People keep track of that stuff all the time. Okay, women and girls all the time. Okay, um, where they first start to do this is with this definition, though. Here's the definition. I'm going to define for you what's known as a conditional probability. It's a conditional probability. And here it is. This is the probability of an event A given that B has occurred, or has happened, or is known. And this is what the definition looks like. P of A, this line is not division. It's a vertical line and represents the phrase, given that, B, that equals N of A and B over N of B. Okay, notice something about this probability definition. What's in the denominator? What's in the denominator? What's on the bottom? N of what? Notice that's not N of S. It's N of B. Okay? N of B. This is your conditional probability definition that we're going to use here. Okay, anybody have any questions on that part? You sure? Okay, let's see, let's see how we can use this. Okay, we're going to use this definition. I'm just curious. You know, this problem, this definition, this context that we're discussing is a context that people often use to start, you know, to use this de definition for conditional probability. And what people like to use or to point out is the concept of chivalry. Is chivalry dead? What does that mean? At w once upon a time, what was society's, um, what, <laughs> demand on men? That you would always save who? The women and children first. Is that true? Women and children. That's just the way it was, or is. I don't know. Does that exist today? Does it? Hmm? Well, today you call that person a what? A macho. You may say he's a gentleman, but you got to make up your mind, right? I don't know. Who knows? Uh, some people have certain feelings. They say, no, chivalry is dead, okay? meaning it's not women and children. It's every man for himself. So yes, I guess the guy's not going to open the door anymore for you. And, or if you're on the Titanic, you're on your own. Is that right? <laughs> so here's the deal. Let me ask you guys 